Hi, I'm Jay. Hello, I'm Ita. Hi, I'm Melissa. And these are some of our favorite books from the 2022 summer reading lists. If you have a haunting, you need a friend like Desmond Cole. But Andres Miedoso is new in town and nervous about a lot of things. Desmond, with his garage office full of unusual gadgets, doesn't seem like the right match for normal, boring Andres. Soon, strange things start happening in the Miedoso house that are scarier than making new friends. Will Andres and Desmond join forces to deal with the ghost? Read about this and other adventures in the Desmond Cole Ghost Patrol series by Andres Miedoso. Astrid and Apollo and the Starry Campout by V.T. Bindanya. Astrid and Apollo are going camping. Apollo is excited for this family trip, but Astrid is anxious. She is afraid of the dark and worries about bears and mosquitoes, though Apollo assures her that they will be together. She discovers that actually camping is not as scary as she had imagined until there is a noise outside the tent in the night. Can she let her father go out there alone? Can she be brave? Astrid and Apollo are Hmong American. At the end of the book is information about Hmong and their food and culture. And this is the first in the series of books about Astrid and Apollo. Mia's life goes from ordinary to totally super when she receives an invitation to attend the Pits, the program for in-training superheroes. All her life, Mia thought she was just a klutz, but it turns out she's a superhero, and so are her parents. Her mom can fly, and her dad can talk to animals. Now she has to maintain her secret identity while balancing her everyday life and learning how to be a superhero. If only chaos and catastrophes didn't seem to follow her. But then, she wouldn't be Mia Mayhem. Read about her adventures in the Mia Mayhem series by Kara West. Peter and Ernesto are best friends. They are sloths, and they couldn't be more different. Peter loves cloud spotting with Ernesto in their tree and is content to never leave. Ernesto loves cloud spotting with Peter in their tree, but Ernesto is not content and embarks on a great adventure to see more of the sky. Fretful Peter eventually follows and has a very different adventure closer to home. Read Peter and Ernesto, A Tale of Two Sloths by Graham Annable for a laugh out loud comic full of expressive art and a touching tale of personal growth and friendship. The Elephants Come Home by Kim Tomsick. In the Zulu land of South Africa is a place called Thulla Thulla. It is a sanctuary for wildlife and it started when Lawrence got a phone call asking if he would adopt a herd of angry elephants. Angry? Yes. This is the story of how Lawrence and the elephants finally became friends and how Thulla Thulla grew to include other animals. At the end of the book, the author tells us more about Thulla Thulla and the work of the sanctuary. You can check out its website online and learn about the place and the animals. Throughout history, there have always been women who have spoken out for what's right. Women who have dreamed big, faced challenges and broken barriers. Women who never took no for an answer, who always persisted. These are the stories told in the She Persisted biography series. Learn about some amazing women who have made lasting impacts on our world, from investigative reporter Nellie Bly, civil rights activists Claudette Colvin and Ruby Bridges, Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor, and others including athletes, doctors, scientists, artists, activists, and more. These biographies are short, accessible introductions to the women's lives and their achievements, written by authors who share a similar background, and end with ways that the reader can also persist in similar ways to the subject of the biography. Did you know that the continent of Africa is bigger than the United States, China, and India combined? Or that Sudan has more pyramids than Egypt? More than 120 languages are spoken in Chad, and there is a magnetic field under Central African Republic strong enough to confuse a compass? Africa Amazing Africa by Atanuke introduces us to the diversity of the continent through short profiles of 55 countries and vibrant illustrations that make this book a real treat to peruse. From desert to rainforest, megacity to village, Africa has it all. The Oldest Student by Rita Hubbard. Can you write your name? and read it? Do you have a favorite book? Can you imagine getting the, a gift of a book and then owning it for 100 years before you learned to read it? That is the story of Mary Walker. 
the oldest student. From the time she was born until she was 15, Mary was a slave and worked in the fields. She couldn't rest when she wanted to, and slaves were not allowed to learn to read. When she grew up and got married and had her children, she had to work hard at farming, and there wasn't time to learn. When she was too old to farm, Mary moved to the city of Chattanooga, Chattanooga and continued to work. At 90 years old, she would listen as her son read to her, but by the time she was 114, she was alone. Is 114 years old too late to re learn to read? Oga Mora is the illustrator of this book. She used acrylic paint, markers and pencils to create the pictures, but she also used patterned paper and book clippings. These make the pictures stand out almost as if you could touch and feel the texture. The end papers show pit photos of Mary Walker and an author's note adds more detail. The Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the original handwritten founding, founding documents upon which our country is based were almost lost when the British invaded and burned Washington, D.C. during the War of 1812, especially because the Secretary of War, General John Armstrong, did not believe the British would invade Washington, D.C. and almost stopped the evacuation of these key documents. Without Stephen Pleasanton's heroic actions, we may not be able to view the original founding documents of our country today. And amazingly, the original Declaration of Independence was almost accidentally left behind. Discover the story of this largely unknown American hero and the everyday Americans, the farmers and merchants, who assisted in transporting these documents out of D.C. in the middle of the night in rescuing the Declaration of Independence, How We Almost Lost the world, Words That Built America by Anna Crowling Redding. Younger siblings will relate to Jasmine Taguchi, who is tired of her older sister Sophie always getting to do things first. Sophie started school first, learned to read first, and now that she's 10, she'll get to help make mochi for the family's annual New Year celebration. At eight, Jasmine is officially too young to help, but she definitely doesn't want to get stuck watching DVDs with her four-year-old cousins. She's determined to help make mochi this year, but rolling dough with the women like Sophie isn't going to cut it. Jasmine wants to pound dough with the men. Will Jasmine finally get her very own first? Find out in Jasmine Taguchi, Mochi Queen by Debbie Michiko Florence. Skunk and Badger by Amy Timberlake. This is the very st funny story of Badger and Skunk. Badger has important rock work to do as a scientist and he likes the peace and quiet of his Aunt Lula's house and he's very structured days. Skunk arrives, another guest of Aunt Lula's. Badger is surprised, but then again, he should have read Aunt Lula's letters. Skunk does not do important rock work, but he does talk to his chicken friends and is not very good at quiet. When a stoat enters the picture, things really take a turn. Can Skunk and Badger overcome their differences? What happens to Skunk's chicken friends? John Classen, the guy who wrote I Want My Hat Back, his illustrations are charming. There are both sketches and full glossy ones. This story of friendship besides differences is a winner. And there is a sequel. There are two rules when it comes to dragons. Don't let them out of the bag and don't feed them anything sweet. Jackson learns these rules the hard way after he's forced to spend the day with Ma, who it turns out is not actually his grandmother, but a witch who's been sent a trio of baby dragons that she needs to return to the magical world, and she needs Jax's help. Unfortunately, a glitchy transporter leaves Ma stuck in the Mesozoic era, and now Jax is on his own, with two essential missions. Save Ma, and safeguard the dragons. Can he do it? Find out in Dragons in a Bag by Zeta Elliott.